Number 10. Marrying the Killer Edith Cassas fell in love with the last man you would ever expect. In 2013, Edith was so crazy for this guy that she married him while he was still in jail. But the craziest thing about it all is that he was in jail for murdering her identical twin sister. It was a pretty grim ceremony to say the least. One of the witnesses was a guard at the jail. The bride was attacked by people throwing rocks and eggs after the service, and she's now one of the most hated women in all of Argentina. He wouldn't exactly call it a dream wedding. Just three years earlier, Victor Singolani, the lucky groom, killed Edith's sister, Johanna Casas, days before her 20th birthday. Police discovered her body abandoned in a field near the small town of Pico Truncado in Argentina. She had two bullet wounds to the head. Police immediately suspected Victor, since he was her former boyfriend. The other suspect was a man she had been living with at the time she was killed. All of them had been seen at a party just a few hours before her death. Victor was ultimately found guilty of the murder, beyond any shadow of doubt. Edith later reached out to him in jail, and they started exchanging letters and eventually began a relationship. They fell in love. He's managed to convince Edith that he had nothing to do with the murder of her sister and that he's been falsely imprisoned. But in reality, police were able to prove he really did put two bullets in Johanna's head. Nonetheless, Edith's waiting for his 13 years in prison to be over so they can finally be together forever. Number 9. The Woman Who Married a Ghost Amanda Teague, a 45-year-old woman from Northern Ireland, married a ghost. Not just any ghost, but the spirit of a pirate named Jack who's been dead for three centuries. Wait, what? Yep, you heard that correctly. The romantic couple had a private wedding ceremony on a boat in international waters off the Irish coast. This was the only way she could make the marriage legal. She even hired a medium for the ceremony. That way, it wasn't too one-sided. The medium said that Jack agreed to the wedding, which made the union official on paper. And since Jack had no physical body to put a ring on her finger, Amanda held a candle with a ring on it, which symbolized Jack. But don't worry, this story gets even weirder. Their love affair started a little while earlier in 2014. Jack's ghost visited her as she was lying in bed. She had to do some research to figure out that Jack was a pirate from the 18th century, who had been abandoned at the altar and then executed for being a thief. Amanda interacted with the entity over a few months, developed feelings for him, and then finally, decided to go through with the marriage. But the marriage only lasted about a year. She has since divorced the ghost, warning people on social media that they should be careful when dabbling in spirituality. It really makes you wonder what the ghost could have possibly done to her. Number 8. A Romantic Murderer A woman had the worst internet date of her life when she accidentally went out with a man who had just killed someone. The killer then tried to use her house as a hiding place. She had absolutely no idea that David Ewo had bludgeoned a retired lawyer named Martin Decker to death with a hammer just a few hours earlier. David, who happened to be homeless, posed as a sex worker in an online advertisement for gay men. When Martin led him into his house for a two-hour appointment, David caved his skull in with his trusty hammer and then stole all his stuff and ran away. In the midst of all this murdering, David still had time to do some romantic internet dating he managed to convince a woman to go on a date with him. He ended up back at her house, but then refused to leave. What started as a perfectly innocent encounter turned into a terror as this woman realized she could not get David out of her house. She eventually called the police, who helped him to vacate the premises. But what the police also found was that David had left behind the claw hammer that he used to kill Martin underneath the unidentified woman's bed. The police used it as evidence to help put David behind bars. Number 7. Anime Obsessed A man in Japan fell in love with something that might be even stranger than a ghost. His name is Akihiko Kondo, and he's a respectable school administrator with a fairly normal life. That's what makes it so strange that he decided to marry a hologram. He had a wedding in November of 2018, in which he married a cyber celebrity named Hatsune Miku. It wasn't recognized legally, but at least it made the man happy. His house on the outskirts of Tokyo is covered in Miku dolls and toys. He's completely obsessed with the character, and now he's with her for life. And when I say he married a hologram, what I mean is that he married a device that kind of looks like a coffee maker. The glass container at the core of the device contains a flickering holographic version of Miku. 
She just kind of floats around in the device all day, although she is equipped with artificial intelligence. What this means is that she's basically a glorified Google smart home, able to turn off the lights, give readings, and have the occasional system meltdown. Do you think relationships like this will become more common as technology continues to advance? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 6. A Violent Love Triangle A shocking incident went down at a traffic light in the Bronx when a failed love triangle erupted in an explosion of murder and vengeance. Lisbeth Mass, a 52-year-old woman, was shot to death on the sidewalk by her jealous suitor, a man named Jose Everaldo Reyes. According to city police, Jose targeted Lisbeth on purpose, waiting for her lunch break to walk up and shoot her six times in broad daylight. And yet, that's not the scariest part. As she lay down on the sidewalk, Jose calmly walked back to his bicycle, jammed his gun into his waistband as if nothing had happened, and attempted to just cycle away. That was when Dwayne Walker sprang into action. Dwayne was Lisbeth's boyfriend, and he saw the whole thing unfold before his mortified eyes. He jumped in his Hyundai Sonata, peeled around onto the street, and then drove full speed at the man who had just shot down his girlfriend. He rammed him with his car, sending Jose and his bicycle flying. Then he backed up over him, trying to crush Jose with his tires. Jose managed to wriggle free and limp away on foot, but Dwayne chased him pushed him onto the hood of somebody's car and began to pummel him in the face. Police quickly arrived and wrestled Dwayne off the old man, but by then he had been beaten pretty bad. But of course, it's hard to feel sympathy for Jose, considering he shot a woman in a jealous fit of rage. You see, Jose and Lisbeth frequently had lunch together, but weren't actually in a relationship. He liked her, but she didn't like him. He grew enraged after finding out she had a boyfriend and had put him into the friend zone and so he went out that morning for some revenge. Number 5. Marrying Her Mother A woman from Oklahoma was sent to jail after she got busted marrying her own daughter. Patricia Ann Spann, 45, was found guilty of felony incest after she admitted to hosting a wedding in which she hooked up with her biological daughter, Misty Velvet Dawn Spann, 26. Patricia had lost custody of her kids a few years earlier. When she reunited with her daughter in 2014, the pair hit it off in a rather unexpected way. After same-sex marriage became legal in Oklahoma in 2016, they wasted no time in getting married. And as if that wasn't twisted enough, just wait until you hear the rest. Investigators also discovered that Patricia had previously married a different one of her children, her 18-year-old son. But that marriage had been annulled in 2010 and found unlawful. According to the local Oklahoma newspaper, Misty was most angry about the fact that her mother had tricked her not tricked into getting married, but tricked by the fact that her mother said the marriage would be legal. She claimed that her mom consulted three different attorneys, who all said there would be no problems with them getting married. When she found out that the union was not in fact legal, she had it annulled. Imagine being divorced twice, both times from your own kids. Both women have been charged, with the daughter getting 10 years of probation and mandatory counseling. Her mother has to serve eight years of probation after a short prison term and will have to register as a sex offender. Number 4. On One Condition Serial killer Joanna Dennehy has fallen in love with a street robber named Haley Palmer in a bizarre and rather dangerous union. Joanna proposed to the street robber herself after they fell in love while serving time behind bars together at the HMP Bronzefield Women's Prison. Haley served a 16-year sentence for robbing people in the street and has since been released. But Joanna still has quite a bit of time to serve. In fact, Joanna will never get out of jail. She is one of the worst female killers in modern English history. She's also one of only two women serving life sentences right now in the UK. She was branded pure evil by criminal psychologists. They say the only reason she committed the murders was because she found it fun. Her first victim was a roommate, a guy named Lucas. She convinced him to meet her in a rural area under the pretense that they would have intercourse. But instead of taking off his pants, she stabbed him in the heart with a knife and then ditched his corpse. The week after, Joanna killed a veteran named John Chapman, also with a knife. And then later that same day, she attacked her landlord Kevin and stabbed him in the neck. When she started, she just couldn't help herself. She would have gone on killing every day if possible, if not for the police catching her a few hours after the third murder and now she's serving a life sentence. But hey, at least she's found love. Number 3. Serial Killer Lover 
a British woman named Tracy Bottomley has never actually met her fiancé, seeing as he is currently locked in an American prison. Nonetheless, she says that she's prepared for whatever trouble being married to a serial killer might bring her way. Tracy is currently engaged to Ernest Otto Smith, a man who was jailed for life for killing a man and a woman back in 2006. He's in jail without parole, so it's not like he and Tracy will ever go for a midnight picnic. She fell in love with the murderer in 2018 after they started speaking as part of a bizarre pen pal scheme. She was quoted as saying, yeah, he's committed a few murders, but I understand the risks. She also says Ernest doesn't scare her in the slightest. They haven't tied the knot just yet, but Tracy is hoping to fly from the UK to the US soon. There, the lovebirds will get married at the Ohio Department of Prisons. Number 2. Love on Death Row A woman in Texas has decided that she will marry a serial killer sitting on death row. According to Don Arguello, mass killer Nico Jenkins is a very sensitive man, but if you ask anybody else, he's a vicious monster. Jenkins is responsible for a killing spree in August of 2013 that went on for 10 days. He terrorized Omaha, killing four people before eventually being caught and sentenced to death. He's now sitting on death row in Nebraska with no chance of getting away. This is despite the fact that he cut off his own boy part in a desperate bid to be declared insane. But after mutilating himself, killing a handful of people, and sitting on death row for a while, Jenkins is now in love. He's even tattooed Dawn's name right on his face. He met his bride-to-be when she volunteered as part of an advocate group for inmates on death row. The couple is now inseparable, except of course for the fact that they can't actually touch or be together. And then of course, there's the terrible fact that the marriage will come to a swift end as soon as Nebraska gets around to killing Nico Jenkins. He'll be the first execution in Nebraska since 1977, when savage killer Robert Williams was given the electric chair. Number 1. Crystal Strauss and her brother's killer Crystal Strauss married the man who killed her half-brother 40 years after his conviction. Crystal, a native of Cleveland, Ohio, tied the knot, even while John Tejan was still on house arrest for the horrendous crime he committed in the 1980s. Brian McGarry had been John's best friend and roommate in 1987, when he was discovered with a gunshot to the head and a single stab wound. When the police interrogated John, he admitted that he had killed Brian, although he had claimed it was in self-defense. Nonetheless, he went on to spend 32 years locked up in jail. The unlikely relationship between the victim's half-sister and the victim's killer started in the 80s as well. John wrote her a letter explaining that he was completely innocent. She believed him and they continued to share correspondence and to have visits until he finally proposed over the phone in 2020. Nothing like a phone proposal to get those romantic juices going. After being released from prison, John and Crystal shacked up and are now living happily ever after. Crystal is still in denial that John shot her brother in the face. Thanks for watching. Which of these bizarre romances do you think is the most twisted? Let us know your thoughts in the comments and be sure to hit that subscribe button for more videos like these. See you next time. Bye.